All right, in this lab, we're going to talk about specific heat capacity. It's actually a really interesting property of material. It's the ability to hold on to heat. And we know some materials transfer heat really well, like metals, and we use them for pots and pans. And some things like water really hold on to heat, meaning you can put a lot of heat in there, and the temperature hardly moves. And so you're going to calculate this property called specific heat of a material. You're going to do it for some metals. You can do it for a reaction. And you're really going to get into this in Chapter 6. So we really want to understand about heat and energy, and in this case, energy transfer. And we're going to relate it all back to temperature difference. That's going to be our clue here in chemistry that uh, there's been energy gained or lost or transferred. All has to do with temperature. So you can imagine our thermometer is going to be our big tool in this. We're going to define a, um, a new variable called uh, Q. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to call it Q, and that has to do with uh, the amount of heat or energy that's lost or gained. And sometimes it's a positive number, sometimes a negative number. And it's going to be related to the amount of mass material that you're dealing with, the temperature change that it undergoes. You can imagine if it's greater temperature change, greater amount of uh, heat. And greater mass, you might need more heat. And uh, the heat lost or gain in the material is related to how much uh, or what is the specific heat capacity of that material. How well does it hold on? We're going to learn more about that number throughout this uh, lab, through our time together. We can define the specific heat capacity as equal to that, that substance, that, that uh, energy in joules that's lost or gained by a material, and how much mass was there and the temperature change it went under. And it is a fairly fixed value for uh, any material. And I'll show you some values for this later on. They're typically uh, between a number that's less than one to something up as high as uh, in the fours. So um, let's take a look at what might we do. Some things to think about though before we actually jump into the experiment. Uh, we can rearrange that equation to figure out how much energy is transferred and uh, multiply both sides uh, actually by mass and temperature and we can actually figure out not only the specific heat of material but how much energy float. That's going to be an important concept. Okay, and this experiment that we're doing in lab is uh, can work for this energy transfer uh, or heating up of materials as long as we're not changing the phase, meaning no liquid to gas or solid liquid. All right, lab manual uses SH. I may use C sometimes. Don't worry, don't freak out. Same, same thing. If you rearrange the um, uh, or replace the SH with a C for capacity and uh, change the order of multiplication, you can have M times C times its delta T. It almost looks like a little A, and it reminds me of the abbreviation MCAT. And I think some pre-med students just shuddered a little bit when I said that. Okay, delta T, though, is specifically defined as the final temperature of that material minus its initial. Final minus initial. Final minus initial. And you can do it in either Celsius or Kelvin. You'll see. It works out. Let's do an example here. Let's say you had 25 grams of aluminum. It was heated 310 degrees, and it cooled down to 37. What was the amount of energy that was transferred out, actually, by the aluminum? Okay, transferred out. Well, we can use that equation, Q, which is the energy, the heat, uh, that was transferred out. And this can equal to the specific heat of the material times M, the mass, and its change in temperature. Recalling temperature change is final minus initial. I use capital T, your lab manual uses lower T. Here was the initial temperature because it was a hot and it cooled down to a final temperature of 37. Here's its mass. And looking up in a table, Okay, from table, then we got this number 0.897 joules per gram Celsius for um, the aluminum. It's, an, it's a property of aluminum, and uh, we, we're giving it here in this problem. I'm giving it to you. We can see grams cancel out, Celsius, degrees Celsius cancel, and left with joules. Do the subtraction, you get a negative number, multiply by 25, multiply by 0.897, you get 6,120 minus. That's the direction of energy that's flowing. It was flowing out because it cooled down and the heat left it. That's what the negative means. It left or it was transferred out of the aluminum and it went somewhere. 
in today's lab that's going to go into water. Okay, so this just gives you an idea how to do a calculation for just looking at a piece of metal that was cooling down. Of course, we could have, could have done it heating up, and really what it would have changed is a sign. Okay, the lab that you guys are doing though is you're going to heat up a piece of metal, you're going to get to a known uh, temperature, and you're going to drop it in to some cool water, okay, or some lab uh, room temperature water that you're going to know. Guess what? You probably use a thermometer to figure out both those numbers and a balance to figure out this and a balance to figure out the mass of that uh, piece of metal. That metal drops into water, okay, and they both come to the same final temperature. So we're going to say that's the same final temperature, TF. Okay. Let's figure out if we can this unknown metal. Well, it's iron. We know what it is. We could look up a specific heat, but let's see if we could calculate it from this experiment. You're going to find out specific heat is the only thing that's not known in this um, problem. Why? Because we know the mass of the metal, 55.0 grams at 99.8 degrees Celsius, and it was dropped into a mass of 225 grams of water at 21 degrees Celsius. So if you look, this is the initial temperature of the metal, and this over here is the temperature initial of, that's supposed to be an equal sign, of the water. Here's its mass, M, and here is the mass of the metal. Did you know that the energy that was lost by the metal is going to be the energy gained by the water? And they come into thermal equilibrium to the same final temperature. Okay, Tf for both of these here. Tf, same final temperature. Can we figure out the specific heat of, your, of, the, of this metal? We're not going to look it up in a table. We're going to calculate it, and that's what you need to do in your advanced study assignment for the first part, part number one. So here's how you would do it. Because energy is conserved, it was completely transferred from the metal to the water, we can say that the, the value of that heat transfer is equal and opposite to the amount gained by water. Why? Because water is absorbing it, so we're going to say um, that the sign is different. Um, one way to kind of look at that is um, you can add the amount of energy of water to both sides, so plus Q H2O, and it would cancel out on the right-hand side, and you get zero on that side. So the energies uh, absorbed and gained um, by the two metals should be the same. Okay, that's another way to say it mathematically. If they're the same and opposite, they should be zero. Well, how much energy was actually um, transferred by the, the metal. We 55 grams was given. We don't know the specific heat. Okay, M cat and then delta T. Uh, so we're going to call that C. And here was the final temperature of the metal and the initial temperature. Okay. We can go ahead and do the math. Do that in the calculator. 23.1 minus 99.8 times 55. And you get a negative 4,219 C. We're going to leave that as our variable. We don't know what it is. We're going to try to calculate it. All that energy went into water. How much water? 225 grams. And here's the temperature change. That's the final. There's the initial. Okay. So our formula for this is still the same. This, though, is given. Water has a really high specific heat. 4.184 joules per gram uh, per Kelvin. Uh, your lab man manual uses 4.184, which is three sig digs. That's fine. You can go ahead and do that. Okay. If you do the math, grams cancel out. Uh, this should be in degrees Celsius, but then that would cancel out with that. And uh, you can get the value of 1977 joules. Well, these two should be equal and opposite to each other. The water that the energy was gained and the heat that came out of this. So what is C going to be? Well, since they're equal and opposite, or you can just add up two, two numbers, they should equal zero. Okay, we, can, we just have one variable now. Oh, that algebra skill is coming back to help us solve this problem. So we subtract 1977 from both sides, okay, and then divide by a negative 4,219. Oops, there we go. And when you do that, you get equals, things messing up here a little bit, 
0.469 for the specific heat of the material joules per gram and you can go ahead and replace this with a degrees Celsius that's fine okay once again the lab is using SH okay another thing the lab wants you to show us somebody had shown a while back that you can actually figure out the molar mass or the type of material because if you know the molar mass you should know the type by taking a simple equation it's equation number four in your lab manual you should read your lab so you know what equations are being used and talked about but if you take just the number 25 and divide it by the specific heat of the material 0.469 you get a molar mass 53 is that anywhere close to iron and sure it's pretty close iron's 55 point looks like eight uh, grams per mole and you'd say oh that's totally different yeah but if you're trying to figure out the difference between iron and aluminum I think you would say this is iron not aluminum and so uh, it really helps and we only have two sig, di two sig digs in the answer uh, because of this but what did we learn we learned the specific heat of this metal iron 0.469 and we were able to actually calculate its molar mass you're going to do that for lab this will help you the ASA should help you do the calculations for part of your lab hope that helps and uh, we actually did the comparison there. And uh, feel free to send an email or talk to me if you have any more questions about this calculation.